Hi, I'm Jackie. And I'm Lee. And we are the Envivo Certified Experts here at the University of Hull. We're going to be running your two-day training and this video is designed to get you ready to jump straight in. QSR International's Envivo 12 Pro is a programme designed to help you store and organise your qualitative data. You can also analyse, categorise, visualise and discover insights about what your data is telling you. It's designed to be used by people who are familiar with qualitative analysis. If you are unfamiliar with your mode of analysis, why not try using Sage Research Methods to get additional help and advice on qualitative methodology? You can access this by going to methods.sagepub.com. One of the key questions we get about Invivo is its ability to transcribe data for you. This is now an additional paid for service that you can choose to use. In using Invivo transcription, your audio files are uploaded to a server, which will then use computer programming to ascertain what words are said and download a completed transcript into the Invivo program. However, this is an optional service and you will have to pay per hour of transcription that you require. Envivo does not require you to use this service, however, and if you have used an alternative transcription service or have transcribed the data yourself, you'll still be able to bring it into Envivo and use it. It's important to add that your data does not have to be transcribed. Envivo will allow you, of course, to analyse directly onto video or audio. Furthermore, if you're working with documents and images, they don't need transcription. However, if you are working with scans, you may want to use OCR technology to turn that into digital text that Envivo will be able to work with. Over the course of your Envivo training, you'll be looking at the following aspects of the programme. Day one will focus on how you get data into Envivo. It will show you the cases function on how to organise social data. We'll also look at file classifications on how to manage your files. Most importantly, we'll spend a fair bit of time looking at coding your data. This is where you're assigning text, images or audio to a theme or any other code or case that you're using. We'll finish by looking at memos. These can be used to record your project, progress and thoughts along the way. On day two, we'll look at organising your data in more detail. This includes the ability to use sets to categorise your data, search folders to automate the categorisation of it, and the advanced filter dialog to help you find particular types of data within your project. The majority of this session, however, will be spent on querying your data. You can think of querying as asking questions of your data, such as where do certain words appear in your data, what words appear the most frequently, and where do different themes intersect. You'll find Invivo 12 installed on all open access computers on the university campus. This includes the library and all computer rooms. If you want to use Invivo on your own computer, however, you will need to download and install it. You can very easily get access to Invivo by heading to the University of Hull SharePoint, share.hull.ac.uk. When you get here, you'll need to head to the ICT department website and navigate through to software and then to Envivo. It's often quicker, however, just to search for Envivo in the search bar. You'll find a link for Envivo. On this page, you'll be able to find links to download Envivo for both Windows and Mac, as well as the license keys to activate it. The license tends to expire around the June July time, at which time you'll need to revisit this page to re license your software. If you're on a staff machine, you'll need to install this via the Software Centre. When you open this up, you'll be able to search for Envivo 12 and use the option here to install it on your machine. This option is only available for staff and on staffed imaged machines. Once you've installed Envivo, you'll find it in your Start menu under All Programs and then QSR. However, it's much quicker to open it up by searching and then clicking on Envivo 12. When Envivo 12 opens, you'll be greeted with this screen. 
Here you've got the option to create a blank project or open a sample project. You'll also find the Learn and Connect area. Here you'll find a link to the Customer Success Centre. This is the complete help file for the programme and you'll find lots of really helpful advice and guidance in here. You'll also find a link to projects that you've recently opened. The blank project option is the one that you'll want to use when you're creating your own research project. You must always start your own project to be able to start working within Envivo. It's not like Microsoft Word where you can just open up a blank document and start working. The sample project option is there to help you learn Envivo. If you click this button, it will copy a sample project to your My Documents folder or G Drive if you're on campus. This takes about 100 megabytes of space, but will give you a really good overview of what Envivo can do. The sample project is a great tool to help you learn Envivo, but we won't be using this within the training. Instead, we'll be using a special training project, which is a subset of this sample project. To show you the Envivo interface, I'm going to open the training project that we'll be using on day two. The Envivo interface is split into three primary columns. The first column is your folder view. It's in all of these predetermined folders that Envivo will store your data and all of the information that you create about it. The middle column is the list view. Here you will see any of the items that are in your folders. In this example, I opened the interviews folder and can see all of the interviews in this project. If I double click on anything in list view, it will open that item in detailed view. You can see this here on the right of my screen. If you open multiple items from your list view, they will load as additional tabs in the detailed view. Across the top of the program, you'll see familiar looking ribbons. Through all of these, we can access all of the options within Envivo to create manage, code and organise our data. You'll also find that some contextual ribbons will appear. As you can see, I have a document open and therefore the document contextual ribbon is available to me. These are similar to the ones that you'll have seen in Microsoft Office, such as the tables contextual ribbon that opens when you click into a table. If we look at the folder view in more detail, you'll see there are a number of items here. It's important that you're familiar with what these terms mean and what kind of things are stored in them. At the very top, we can find data. This is split into files, file classifications and externals. Within the files folder, you will store the vast majority of the data you are using in your project. This could be Microsoft Word documents, PDF files, transcripts, audio, video, tweets, data sets, and any other kind of qualitative data supported by Envivo. The file classifications folder allows you to create attributes about that data. You can tell Envivo what kind of data exists in your project and you can store information about it. This is incredibly useful for when you're searching. The final option is externals. You can use this as a proxy for any data that Envivo does not support. For example, a physical book or any of your notes about something that Envivo does not support. The codes folder stores your relationships and your nodes. Nodes are incredibly important in Envivo as these include all of the pieces of information you want to associate with your data. For the vast majority of researchers, this constitutes your themes but could include any attitudes, behaviours, actions, or other concepts you identify in your data. When you click on any of these, it will show you all of the text, images, and audio that you have allocated to that theme. This makes them an essential way of organising your data. Next up, we have cases. Cases are your units of measurement. For most researchers, the cases will involve the participants you've worked with within your project. Here we can see a list of all of the different people 
who are included in the interviews of the training project. There's also the option for case classifications. Similar to file classifications, we can use case classifications to allocate attributes to individuals. In this example, we can find a whole range of information has been stored about all of the participants within this project. This is an essential tool for a lot of researchers, particularly if you're undertaking a comparative study. In this case, these attributes would allow me to differentiate data based on someone's gender, their age group, their township, or how many generations down east they have lived. It's important that you record relevant attributes, of course, for your data and your participants. The final folder I want to draw attention to is the notes folder. Here you will find memos, framework matrices, annotations, and see also links. Over the course of this training, we'll predominantly be using the memos function. Here you can store your evolving ideas and thoughts about your data and the analysis of it. The other functions within this particular area will be covered in our additional training. Likewise, the search folder will be covered in day two of your training and the maps and the outputs folders and the functions within these will be covered in additional training. At its heart, we can consider Envivo the world's most advanced pack of highlighter pens. If I open up one of the interviews here, for example, Barbara's, we can see there is a traditional transcript. We have Henry, the interviewer, asking questions of Barbara. And by using these coding stripes, I can bring in all of the overlaid data in the project. If I scroll down, we can see some of these areas of conversation have lots of overlaying intersecting themes. This kind of level and detail of analysis is very difficult to achieve with pen and paper techniques. Don't worry about the practicalities of doing any of this. This will all be covered in your training. The key thing right now is that you're familiar with the interface and some of the basic workings of InVivo and how it's laid out. I've returned briefly to the InVivo 12 Pro welcome screen just to show you how to create your own blank project. I'm going to click on the blank project option and give my project a name. If you're on a university machine, by default, this will save on your G drive, but you can use the browse option to save this somewhere else. When you first open a blank project, it will show you the quick start steps window. Here you will find a video that will show you the very basics to get you going with Envivo. This short tutorial is always a useful reminder if you need to refresh your skills with Envivo. It's also important to note that there is a question mark at the very top of the program. You can use this at any point to access the customer success center, which will open in your browser. This help is contextual. So if you're in a particular function of InVivo, it will open the help associated with that area. You're almost ready to take a training now, but before I finish this video, I want to highlight some very important information about saving your project and keeping it secure. Your InVivo project will be a very precious file to you. It will represent all of your data, your analysis, and your thoughts. You don't want to lose this. By default, InVivo will encourage you and remind you to save every 15 minutes. You can do so by clicking on the blue floppy disk save icon. Alternatively, you'll find it under file and then save. You can see this option is greyed out, as is the floppy disk, as I have recently saved. If the options are not available, it means there are no changes to save. You must always save this file somewhere that is not a live synced cloud space. For example, if I directly save this to my box or my OneDrive folder, it will cause stability issues with Envivo. You should always save your Envivo project to your C drive if it's your own computer, your G drive if it's a university machine, or a compatible USB storage device. You can of course back your data up to the cloud by going to File and Copy Project. 
and then choosing to save it on your box, OneDrive or other alternative space. However, before you save your data in the cloud, you should consider if it is legal to do so. The Data Protection Act and the GDPR guidelines prevent you from storing any personally identifiable data outside of the European Economic Area. The vast majority of cloud services do so. As a researcher, your first duty is to always protect your participants, so you should always be very careful with where you save your data and how you manage it. Further advice on this is available from your faculty ethics committee and from your supervisor. There is no alternative to regular backups for your project. You can back it up at any point by going to file and copy project. Here you can choose a new location to save it, such as a portable drive or another hard disk. If something goes very wrong with your Envivo project, there is a recovery option. However, by default, Envivo will only save a project recovery file every 24 hours. Furthermore, this recovery file is only generated when you actually save the project. If you are not saving regularly and Envivo crashes, you will lose data. However, you can make the project recovery process occur on an hourly basis. This will still, however, only be triggered when you save. To change this option, you need to go to File and then Options. In here, you can choose the Project Recovery tab and then you're able to switch this to every hour. On campus, your project recovery file location is by default your G drive. You can however change this to a portable drive or a second hard drive if working on your own PC. Once again, project recovery is only there as a backup and is not an alternative for manually saving backups of your project. If you ever need to recover a file, Envivo will trigger this process when you open up a file that a recovery is available for. This caution is not to dissuade you from using Envivo. Like any other program or computer file, you must back up your data regularly. Following the guidelines in this bit of the video will help keep your data safe. You should also make sure you store it in multiple locations. Backup files are fantastic, but if they're all stored on the same hard drive as your main project and that hard drive is lost or corrupted, you will still lose all of your data. The final thing to consider with your backups is how secure the place you store them is. Once again, your supervisor and faculty ethics committee will be able to provide guidance on this, but at a minimum, you should at least consider storing them on a BitLocker encrypted drive.